Hello everyone. Welcome to week three of our virtual Sunday school. Um, I am hoping to share some um, pictures with you this week from uh, the Swan family turned in some photos this last week with um, their items from actually from week one and from week two. So we'll have those um, posted for you and please send me your photos. We'd love to share some more of what folks are doing with their at-home Sunday school. And the Swans asked me a question. They asked if green was my favorite color because last week I was wearing green and I was in my room, which is green. And I do like green, but my most favorite color is blue. So my question to you is, what is your favorite color? And you can text or email that to me um, this week. So that's a fun question to ask, and I'm happy to tell you that blue is my favorite color. All right, so this week I have a face for you. On this side, it's a smiley face. And on this side, it's a sad face. And we all have times in our lives when we are happy, when things are going well for us, we have great news to share, fun things are going on, and um, because we live in a broken and sinful world, we also have times in our lives when things aren't going so well. Maybe we are um, in a fight with a friend or one of our siblings, or we're sad about something that's going on in the world around us. So we have um, times when we have all different kinds of emotions. We can even have the same situation and different people can feel differently about it. So if it's a rainy day, you might have some people who are sad about that because they were planning on going to the zoo or they were gonna do something fun outside and now they're not able to do that. While other people uh, might be happy that it's a rainy day. They like being cozy inside on a rainy day. They're gonna bake some cookies or maybe they wanna go outside and, and stomp in the rain puddles. So um, we have, it can even have different responses to the same situation. And today's Bible story is a good illustration of how life as a Christian has joy and sadness. And it is the story of Stephen. And so um, that we're going to find that in Acts chapter 6 and 7. So again, I have all my different kinds of Bibles for you. If you're using my very first Bible, it's page 1624. Uh, if you need to pause the video for this while you find it, feel free to do so. Again, 1624 in the, action, in the my very first Holy Bible. Uh, in the Action Bible, it starts on page 668, and I will just tell you that if you're looking in this Bible, it's the story itself starts on page 669, but the preview of information about Stephen uh, is on 668, so that's 668 in the Action Bible. And again, the Story Bible, the one I'll be reading out of today, the Bible story is on page 428. 428. So I'll be turning there. Um, many of you have heard of Stephen or know the story of Stephen. He is uh, the first martyr, and a martyr is someone who dies um, for the sake of Jesus, for telling other people about Jesus. They give their life um, in that pursuit of telling others about Jesus. And Stephen uh, is known as being the first martyr. So this is again after Pentecost. Um, the first Christians are sharing about Jesus and the Christian church is growing. And Stephen is someone who is known as an elder or a deacon. He's some of the first group of people who are um, going to be taking care of people and they're going to be spreading the word about Jesus. And so I'm also going to go through uh, a second time and we're going to talk about times about in this story about um, parts of the story that are happy and parts of the story that are sad. So be thinking about that as we're reading through it the first time. God's servant Stephen from Acts chapter 6 and 7. The disciples were increasing in number, but a complaint about food arose. The twelve summoned all the disciples, and they said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out seven men full of the Spirit and of wisdom. We will give them this work, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. What they said pleased the whole group, and the people chose Stephen, 
He was a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. They chose six other men too. These they set before the apostles. The apostles prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to increase. The number of the disciples grew, and Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some rose up and disputed with Stephen, that means they argued with him, and they set up false witnesses, and they said, This man speaks words against the temple and the law. We have heard him say that Jesus will destroy this place. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. Then Stephen told them about Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, David, and Solomon. And at last Stephen said, You always resist the Holy Spirit. You do not keep God's law. Now when they heard these things, they got mad. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up into heaven. Stephen saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open. I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice. They covered their ears and rushed at Stephen, and then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Stephen called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And that does not mean that he fell asleep like took a nap. That means they stoned him until he died. And as we go back and look at our story, we want to think about times in this story when there was joy or happiness and when things were sad or not so happy. So as they start out, there's great news, right? Very happy. The disciples are increasing in number. More and more people are coming to know Jesus and hearing the Easter story and believing that Jesus is the Savior. So that's wonderful news. The sad news is then, when it's talking about them disputing about food, they're talking about sharing food and clothes and resources with people who were less fortunate, like widows whose husbands had died, um, those who were maybe crippled or unable to care for themselves, and relied on the help of the early Christian church for what they needed. And so um, they decided they needed to put some people ahead of them or in charge of taking care of the widows, the orphans, those who were less fortunate. And so Stephen is one of those people that was chosen to do that. And so now they have a plan, and that's good news for how to take care of, of God's people. And again, Stephen is full of the Holy Spirit, and the words about Jesus um, are growing more and more. Stephen is able to do wonderful signs uh, in the name of Jesus amongst the people. But now we have bad news. There are those who are not happy about what Stephen is saying. There are Jewish leaders who still do not believe that Jesus rose again and that he was the Savior, and they want to stop Stephen. They do not want him to keep spreading this news, and so they spread lies about him. They have untruths that they're sharing about him, and so he is in front of the leaders, and he refuses to stop telling the truth. So he um, goes back to the church fathers, to the those in the Old Testament, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, David, Solomon, and he is recounting their stories. And Stephen is asking these leaders to repent. He's saying, you're not keeping God's law. And then that makes them very angry. They do not want to hear that they are sinners and that they're not doing um, what God wants them to do. So Stephen, though, is full of the Holy Spirit. He looks up to heaven and he sees the glory of God. He sees Jesus there and he is full of joy. And he tells them that, that he sees um, the Son of Man, that's Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. But the Jewish leaders are so angry that they rush at Stephen and they go out of the city and they stone him to death. So they cast stones at him. But right before he dies, Stephen calls out, 
Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Basically, he's saying, Lord, forgive them. And that's wonderful news. Stephen wants even these people that are stoning him to death, he wants them to be forgiven. And so even at the very end of his life, he is sharing the love of Jesus with those who want to hurt him and kill him. All right, so those church leaders did not want to hear that they were sinners. And sometimes we don't want to hear that either. We don't want to know that or think about what we've done is wrong or that it hurts other people, especially if we're mean, like to someone in our family. We don't want our parents to correct us when we talk back. We don't want to think about how we were mean to a friend or a brother or sister. Sin builds a wall between us and God and also between us and the people in our lives even those that we love. There's this wall that gets built up with all the wrong things that we do. And there is only one thing that can take care of that. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us our sins and the cross breaks down the wall that separates us from God. We are then able to forgive others because of the love that Jesus has shown to us. And those are our Bible words this week. Our Bible words are from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Can you say that with me? Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. That means because Jesus died on the cross for us, now we can forgive other people in his name and we can work on restoring those relationships, those walls that might be broken. And Jesus restored that wall between us and God and now we are holy and righteous in God's sight. And that, here's my smiley face, that is wonderful, great news. Okay. Before we pray, I do want to share with you the sheet that you have for week three. It's kind of a coloring page, but it gives some different scenarios of times when um, we might need to ask for forgiveness. When something has gone wrong, um, something has gotten hurt or broken or a relationship, um, different times when we ask for and receive forgiveness. And so as you're coloring this page, I would like you to think of a time in your life when you have sinned and have been forgiven. And maybe you can talk about that as a family, times when you have needed to forgive one another. And I just want to point out to you that sometimes when somebody does something to us, we say, um, oh, it's okay or not a big deal. And it's really important to say to the other person, I forgive you. Or when you've done something wrong to say, will you forgive me? It's There's a lot of power in those words because it reminds us of what Jesus has done for us and how he has forgiven us. And he didn't just say, it's okay. He said, it is finished and our sins are truly forgiven. And so it's important for the people in our lives and us to hear those words, to ask for forgiveness, and then to receive that forgiveness from someone else in our life. So um, I ask you to, to think about that this week as you're working on this, uh, as you talk about that with your family, that it, the importance of forgiving the people in our lives. All right, let's go ahead and let's finish up with a prayer. This week, I'll just say the prayer. So you can just fold your hands and listen. And then um, maybe when you're done as a family, you can say a prayer that incorporates um, some um, talking about forgiveness and, and asking for forgiveness for your sins as well. So we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you have sent Jesus to be our Savior, to die for us, to take away our sins. And we pray now that in our lives, um, as we sin, that you forgive us and that the other people that we have hurt 
forgive us as well. And we ask that you would help us to forgive others when they have hurt us also. We ask that you would go with us now this week, that you would bless us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, we pray that you have a wonderful week in the Lord, and uh, we will see you next week. Thank you.